right now. I want to welcome from Michelle and Associates down in California. Matthew Cabero is, excuse me, uh, with us on the program. Matthew, how are you today, sir? Fine, thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thank uh, you for having me. Yeah, it's good talking with you. And I, uh, I took a look at the letter that you had sent the mayor and the city council there in uh, San Jose as they were considering uh, this new gun control measure, a, uh, a storage requirement, uh, fairly sweeping storage requirements, and. It, it seems, Matthew, uh, there are a number of issues that uh, Michelle and Associates had found with that proposed ordinance, including, and, and you know, you, this is why you got to actually read these ordinances because some of the devil's in the details here. The definitions uh, that the San Jose City Council is using here for uh, what what would meet their requirements, you say could actually uh, leave a lot of gun owners and a lot of commonly owned gun safes. Uh, as as unauthorized uh, uh, security devices, like you could put your gun in a gun safe and you'd still be breaking this law. Yeah, and you, you sort of took the words right out of my mouth. I mean, really, it's it literally the devil's in the details in these kinds of things. And so, what what the uh, the city council has done is they've drafted an ordinance that essentially requires you to store a firearm in either a locked container or disabled with a trigger lock. Now, the definition that they've used for the term locked container. Uh, they simply refer to the California Penal Code definition, but they also require that the lock container be listed on what's called the California Roster of Approved Firearm Safety Devices. That particular roster uh, is something that's managed by the Department of Justice here in California, and even DOJ themselves have sort of misinterpreted the law to say that essentially some gun safes have to be listed on that roster, when really gun safes are not specifically listed on that roster because it's not a firearm safety device. It's a gun safe. There's a separate definition for the term gun safe. And so what the city council has done, they've just sort of assumed that, you know, a, 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 a lock container that's also listed on this roster is, is sort of the, the end-all, be-all of, of ways of storing a firearm. And so really what that's done, though, is that you have these bank bank vault grade safes that are, you know, thousands of dollars that aren't listed on that roster. And so it's this absurd result that they're essentially saying that if you, if you want to satisfy the requirements of this ordinance, uh, those safes won't meet that, that requirement. And it, it's, it's confusion even among the city council members that don't necessarily fully understand that. I was just watching the, uh, the video from, from last night's meeting, and even the city council member who's the proponent doesn't understand that. And so it, it's, you know, it's baffling that, that, that that's what they're trying to do. It, so. it, it is baffling. I mean, and the vote yesterday in uh, San Jose was a one vote margin. So, uh, you know, it maybe there were some council members who were swayed by your letter, uh, Matthew, explaining some of these issues, uh, because to the best of my knowledge, they didn't revise the language. They they passed this ordinance as it was drafted. And, and the problem uh, there with those definitions still remain in the ordinance. Uh, is that your impression as well? Yeah, that, that's what it looks like. I haven't actually had a chance to go through the whole whole meeting yet. Obviously, it's a very long meeting. It started at 1.30 yesterday, and I think it went on for close to nine hours. They, of course, sent, set the uh, the uh, the firearm ordinance for the last last agenda item. But it looks like they they didn't amend it at all, and so these problems are still there. But they didn't amend it largely because the uh, the council member who was the main proponent of the ordinance sort of said that you know we got it wrong in our letter that that's not the case. And so it doesn't seem like any of the other council members question that. And so, of course, you know, that's completely wrong, the way, the way that he, he, he described it. And so we're going to have to probably hopefully try and bring that to the attention again of the council when this comes up again for sort of a final vote. Um, okay. Uh, and, and so there will be one more vote on this. This is not the only issue that, uh, that you pointed out. Uh, you also pointed out uh, that this uh, a law, in your opinion, uh, uh, may run afoul of California's preemption law because the state already has a, a storage law on the books. Is that correct? That, that's correct. California has what's it's sort of referred to as a negligent storage provision, where if you, if you store a firearm in a manner that either a, a person that's prohibited from owning or possessing firearms or a child is likely to gain access to it, you're subject to criminal penalties under California law already. And so what the council, council is doing is, is they're trying to address that very issue of people to gain access to firearms that aren't supposed to, such as children and prohibited persons, by essentially mandating that under all circumstances the firearm be stored in a locked container or disabled with a trigger lock. But, you know, that, that's something that, for the most part, is already covered in California law, and, and it's covered fairly thoroughly. And so what the California law does, at least, is it allows people to sort of, you know, store their firearms in, in, a, in a manner that meets their particular needs and circumstances. But instead, what you have here, city councils like this, 
they're essentially deciding for you how you should store your firearms when that might not necessarily be appropriate for your particular needs or situation. Uh, so, Matthew, you said that there is uh, one more sort of formal vote here uh, before this law will go into effect. Um, and, and hopefully, again, maybe we'll see some of these council members uh, take a closer look at this issue. But uh, is it uh, your opinion? I mean, is this could this letter that you sent uh, be fairly characterized as a pre-litigation letter? I mean, uh, is San Jose opening up the door to uh, the possibility of litigation over this ordinance if it uh, actually goes into effect? Yeah, and and that's true. And San Jose isn't the only city that has an ordinance like this. And this is something that's becoming more and more of a problem in California is that you have local jurisdictions that are passing ordinances like this that sort of create this patchwork quilt of laws that, you know, are act as basically traps for un, for unsuspecting law-abiding gun owners that if they go to a particular city, they might be subject to restrictions that might not necessarily apply to their home or residence. And so, of course, you know, who goes to takes a vacation somewhere and looks up all of the local laws and restrictions on something like this mm-hmm. and, and, you know, is, is therefore, you know, potentially put, exposing themselves to, to serious criminal penalties, in this case a misdemeanor with, up, you know, a $1,000 fine and up to six months in prison. And, and, and it's, it's definitely becoming a serious problem here in California, and absolutely they're sort of exposing themselves to potential litigation in the future. And we've seen that with some jurisdictions regard, that have attempted local restrictions, like recently in the, uh, in the city of Pleasant Hill, they were forced to spend uh, close to $400,000 to settle a lawsuit with the National Shooting Sports Foundation for their local ordinance restricting firearms dealers. And so th- this is definitely an issue, and this is something that will be looked at heavily, I'm sure, in the future. So. Uh, absolutely. Matthew, listen, thank you so much for coming on the program today. It is good talking with you, sir. You too. Thank you for having me. You bet. Matthew Cabero uh, talking about that uh, new ordinance in San Jose, California. Uh, we will uh, give you the latest again here on Cam & Company. Make sure you're following uh, Chuck Michelle. And his associates, like Matthew, at uh, Michelle Lawyers on Twitter or michellelawyers.com.